So as it turns out, Tint News is already a Facebook group. I have been live streaming to multiple platforms this week and I figured out the one most important thing that you can do for your Facebook posts that will help get them more engagement and reach without actually having to pay for it. All coming up in today's Tint After I made the first Tint News, the Facebook group Tint News was kind enough to share it and I was slightly nervous because whenever that type of stuff happens, I usually get like a backlash of random shit. But no, they were super nice and they want me to make more of these. So yeah, I'll throw a link to them in the video description. Feel free to go check them out and thanks guys so much again. So as many of you have seen on this channel, I have been an absolute live streaming nutcase lately. I'm really excited about the whole thing. So I've been digging into everything that I can learn about live streaming. It's stuff that I have tried in the past before, but this is now a proven method. It's easy to get up and going and I couldn't be happier with the way all this is working out. So in my research for live streaming to multiple platforms, I've actually figured out a super beneficial thing that you can do for your Facebook posts, which in the past, I've, I've had no idea what to do with Facebook. You have the Facebook page and you have the Facebook groups. Now, if you wanna be more public, you should be posting on your Facebook page. And then what ends up happening is everybody has a discussion in the Facebook group. So I've gravitated more towards my own Facebook group and just whenever I post a video, that's typically where I'll share it if I do that at all. But when I was going live with my Facebook, um, I decided to push it more towards my page in the hopes that it would possibly outreach to more people. And this was a really interesting week because I did a couple of live stream tests. Now the first one went incredibly well. Like I've had more engagement and impressions than I've ever had on anything that I posted on Facebook. Because generally what will happen is when you make a Facebook post, they will seed your post out to only a handful of your actual likes and followers. Like I only have 2,000-ish people that actually liked my Facebook page. It's generally meaningless. So my first live stream actually peaked out at just under 10,000 impressions. Now that's like if you look at that bar, Facebook wants you to pay to get your post to reach more people. And that thing just poof, fucking blew everything out of the water. So I was extremely happy with the first one. Thursday, I was all fired up for the next one. And when I went live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, my viewership on YouTube far outreached Facebook. Like I think I only had 200-ish views on that live stream and I was really confused. So you can make an argument that, yeah, they got posted on different days, so maybe there's different viewership there, but because they were such a stark difference, I figured one of two things. So sometimes when you go live and you haven't done anything on your page for a while, Facebook will actively push out notifications to more people in the hopes to get you more active on your page. But my other theory, and this turned out to be the one that was actually helpful kind of forgot that I did in the first one was I actively asked people to share my live stream to more places and in doing so that was the secret sauce that made that video that live stream go like massively bigger than what I had anticipated like it was easily half my viewership for that first live stream so on Friday I asked people to do it again and Here's the analytics for them. Like you can actually see the point in time where it really mattered. So I asked at the beginning of the live stream and I think a handful of people shared it, but not very much. And then midway through, I asked again and somebody personally told me that they shared it to five extra groups and you can see a direct correlation between when they said it and just we went from 10 concurrent viewers to 50. The top 1% of streamers on Twitch have 400 viewers or more. I've had concurrently at my peak 150. This is a big deal. This is a fucking massive deal between both YouTube and Facebook. Like live streaming, oh, I'm so excited. I, I couldn't be happier with the way this turned out. So what does that mean for your actual Facebook posts? You have to make them very shareable. Now this is something that's really hard to figure out 
how to make shareable, engaging posts, but that's kind of the, the message here is you need to be as creative as you can if you want to get more people to see your stuff. So my one piece of advice for shops trying to actively attract more customers off of Facebook in your area is ask the customer to share a post of yours. When you go to take pictures of their car and post them on your own page, ask if they'll share it for you because I guarantee that would have a much stronger impact and local like word of mouth advertising. That's exactly what it is. So if you have some more tips on what you can do for Facebook specifically, leave them down in the comments below. I'm a relative novice at, at local marketing, but I understand analytics and stuff on a lot of these platforms. And I have just researched some of this stuff to death. So I, I just couldn't believe the difference between the two. So hope this guy's helped you out. And with that, let's get into the next topic. So in a little follow-up to our last Tint News, I talked about Expel cutting out uh, people that were using their software program to only dealers using Expel Film. And as it turns out, I'm getting more and more private messages from people where Expel has cut them off entirely because they're just a little guy. So I understand why this is happening. I can see it from the corporate side, right? You have this big wannabe prestigious brand name and you're so focused on making it look like you are the top dog in the industry. So any guy that's tinning out of his local garage or a smaller shop, like you just want the biggest and the best shops. And so they're just gonna be cutting off more and more people as time goes on. So I got a direct message from a guy who said he's got a 30 day notice from them and he just can't buy from them anymore, let alone try and rep them as a brand or anything. like. It, it, he's been using them for years. That's what he's been selling to his customers and he's had a great experience, but now, sorry. So there's other Expel competition in his areas and those are the guys that they wanna focus on. So from a business standpoint, corporate standpoint, yes, I understand, but a lot of these places come out of individuals in their garages and go on to build something great and that really fucking sucks. So Expel, you suck for doing shit like this. I get it, but you suck. So I'd like to end on a little bit of a positive note, and I came across this post in the Window Tinning Facebook group. I'll have a link in the description to the post, but it was from a guy named Sebastian. And what he said is, I'd like to encourage some of you guys to stop being full of crap with fellow tinters, teach newcomers how you actually learned, and let your pride go. He goes on to say a little bit more, but well said, I am completely on page with that. It's been something I felt very strongly about. I've had nothing but good things from basically sharing all my information and what I've learned. I've learned tenfold of that from Facebook groups, talking with other people. It's just a good thing. Nothing but good seems to come back from something like that. I haven't lost any business that I can see from it. And I think in the end, as long as it comes from a good place and you're really trying to help people and you're not trying to be skeevy about it, it's gonna come back to you tenfold. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I probably will make some more of these now, but if you like this, again, please share it on Facebook and give it a good thumbs up and a comment. I don't know what that really does for YouTube analytics, but it makes me feel good. So I'll see you guys in the next one.